Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, I'm told to preach on the topic in this section, power as of old. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. Power as of old. Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Are you there? But you shall receive power after take note of that. After the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be my witness. Only then shall you be my witness. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, power, dictionary said, its ability and capacity to dictate or to influence people, dictate the outcome of event repeatedly. But I want to lift up the one I said to dictate the outcome of event repeatedly. Not once, not twice. You determine what happens in your environment. Too many things only responds to power or hear the language of power. There are too many things that does not hear grammar. They only hear the one spoken on the power. There are too many things that can never change until power is displayed. We live in a time that things in the natural they are beginning to fail. Common malaria. Common malaria common malaria, as common as it is. These days, resist anti-malaria. You take anti-malaria severally, it seems you are taking chalk. There are many things that resist the natural. They only respond to the supernatural. When I mean the supernatural, I mean the power. If and if malaria resists anti-malaria, what do you say about things like cancer and its related? There is nothing to tell a cancer patient. There is no grammar you can speak around a cancer, cancer patient. If not to bring power. There is a level of cancer rates even chemotherapy can no longer work. The best in medicine they are having situations that are beyond control. Many diseases and sicknesses are coming out right are coming out these days that even, even medical doctors have no solution for it. He said have respect for thy covenant for the habitation of the dark place is full of cruelty God sent Moses to go tell Pharaoh let my people go when he saw Pharaoh Pharaoh resisted him he returned to God crying God said even when I sent you me I know Pharaoh won't let you go I know you God you mean you know say yes when I sent you, I know that he won't let you go. In fact, I will help to harden his heart the more. Why should I? Why will I harden his heart? Because I want to display my power. Uh, when there is resistance, the language you need to speak is the language of power. When a sickness defies medication, 
There's a language that we cannot define. It's called power. Kaliba koto bosada. Ikatu kanege de borosada. And we had in his heart that I may display my power. He said to Moses, they won't let you go until there is a mighty hand that compels him to do so. I call him compelling hand. That is what is called power. Lack of it keeps men stranded. Lack of it makes you to explain too much. Sir, you don't explain God, you show God. You don't explain God to a native doctor. You will, you will, you will show God to a native doctor. We live in a time where believers are caught. They have problems with one another. And an unbeliever will call a believer to answer in a shrine. A believer will carry his two legs to go and answer shrine. Shame. A friend of mine in Onisha, he has a friend. They were together talking. So he told him, he told one of them, he said, somebody's owing me. He said, somebody's owing me. I've done everything. I supplied him goods. He refused to pay. He said, the annoying part of it, he comes to market because the man deals on wholesale. He comes to market to buy from my neighbor and pay. I refuse to pay me my money. He said, I've done everything. I've threatened him with police. He refused. Guess what the man said? The man said, how much will you give me if I recover the money? He said, you, how will you recover money? He said, with my phone call. I'll make a call now. He will pay you. Yeah? He said, if you make the call, he pays you. I give you 20%. He said, you are sure? He said, yes. The man said, give me his number. He gave me his number. He died his number. When the guy picked, he said, this is priest, so, 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 and so, from Okita Shrine. Your case is in our shrine. Do you know so 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 person? He said yes. He reported that you are owing him and you are to answer within 14 days or we come and look for you. He said, he said, sir, I'm owing him. I was about paying him now. I was about paying him now. He said, well, if you have to, I've given you the message. If you like to pay, if you pay him, he will signal us that you are paid. If not, answer us in 14 days. The man off the phone and they started laughing. Why they were still laughing? The guy that refused to pick his call started calling the man right there. Look at your neighbor say, power. Started calling him and now told him, you will see an alert now. He said, the guy started pretending, I don't care whether you like pay or not, you go and answer them. Why they were there? The guy sent 80% of the money and told him he's expecting money tomorrow morning. We pay the remaining. The following morning, he paid. We live in a time because of powerlessness. People fear native doctors than church. People fear native doctor than pastor. Bahaki Teborosha. I told God, not in my time. Look at your neighbor. Say, not in my time. Even when we gave them good seats in front, they said we didn't allow them to sit with pastors. This is power is what makes unbelievers don't take us serious. Because we say things and they don't see it. Lack of power will make it look like your God is a liar in your life. Because all the things you'll be saying, you'll be seeing the opposite of it. Because there are forces, anyone, anger. Jesus has done it, though. he has paid the price. But there are still forces. Paul said, we rush to not against flesh and blood. There's a wrestling contest going on. And some of them, you don't just speak. There's something that needs to back you up. Jesus, the living word. Listen to this. Jesus, the living word. Stayed with the disciples and Peter for, th for more than three years, teaching them the word. The living word taught them the word. But 
after teaching them, he said to them, I can't guarantee your safety. I can't guarantee your success. Peter, even you will deny me before a little man. I can't guarantee you to do well. Hey! You must go and wait. He said, wait until he comes. The preacher said, I don't mind waiting because it will watch the cost. What is the difference between what is the difference between Peter that denied Jesus be, before a little maid, a little maid that has no influence? What is the difference between that Peter and the Peter that stood before thousands and preached the gospel and three thousand knelt and they were coming to Jesus? What is the difference? Power. Somebody say power. It's the end of all argument. Is the end of all question. When it's in place, everything is relegated to the background. With all your getting, get power as of old. Power is the reason why somebody will do business for a long time because of your weakness. Because of your weakness, you are inside the market and you are reading books when you went to say. When you carry Bible like this, you read 30 chapters. I'm not against you reading. But why would you go to your shop and read like you're a Bible student? An unbeliever is busy selling. the outcome of events repeatedly. It controls things. If Jesus needed power, how can you say you wouldn't need it? If Jesus, the living world, told them to go and wait, how can you say you don't need it? Life without power, if you'll be stranded. You will struggle. Ministry without power, Hey. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you tell them. If, do, if they like, tell them anything. The day you see where they go, you will shock that they are the people you have been preaching to. Something changed the way I think many years ago. I'm born and brought in this church. One of the guys that used to be with me in secondary school, traveled abroad, came back with sickness, and they told me where he want to go for healing. He said it has defied medication. I said to him, but I'm hearing that that place is not too good and all. Guess what he told me? He said it doesn't matter. He said I've gone to good places, they couldn't solve the matter. So he want to go there. He said when they finish solving this matter, he come and give God the glory. doesn't matter what we teach people. When a man is dying, sometimes he doesn't reason well. He needs solution. It's not enough to speak against fake until we produce original. The truth about it is that you can't find 2,000 naira fake anywhere. You know why? Because there's no original. Once there is original, they will fake it. So every fact you see out there is something that was copied from original. So the only way, the only way we can run the fake out of the market is to produce original. Until you produce original, you have no point. So it's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. is weak. He's not looking like those who want something. I 
I said that amen is weak. Listen carefully. In one of our churches in Umbai, I don't want to mention. A deacon. A deacon. Just stay with me. I'll still balance all I'm saying. A deacon had an open confrontation with a, an occultic man. The occultic, I think I can mention the church. It happened. It's not in Jerusalem. Used to own a school. He was a deacon. When an occultic man confronted him, the man said to him, I don't talk to me. Like he said, Why won't I talk to you? Do you know who I am? And the occultic man introduced himself. He said, I give you seven days to die. And the then he left. The occultic man went back to his. Went back to business as usual. Sleeping normal. Sleeping normal. No prayer. Nothing. Things I'm telling you happen in a place they call Oman and Kapo. Who has them? Both day after that confrontation, the third day, Bijin entered his house. He didn't know in the occultic world, according to him, they said they projected his life. Something hit the pigeon. He just pigeon. Pigeon is pigeon. When he hits the pigeon, pigeon died as he took his hand and turned it like this. Jam. The hand turned him. They carried him to FMC. That was the third day. Fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. According to the occultic man, our deacon died. We'll go sing for him. When I walk in, I'm going to come back on. <laughs> Even if God wants to call me home, it won't be from the mouth of an occultic man. It's a slap of redemption. He that is in honor and knoweth it not, it's like a beast that perishes. I give you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions. There's a Bible school in Abba. There's a Bible school in Abba. There's a Reverend Doctor. His brother died. So he said his uncle. He went to his uncle. I don't want to mention his name. He went to his uncle. The uncle looked, he looked at the uncle, he said, I know you are the one that killed my brother. He told the uncle, you eh, I will kill you in 14 days. The uncle looked at him and said, you, you, I give you the same seat I bet you are going. Seven days. You don't know why they like seven days. Sir, the Reverend doctor went back to business as usual. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, what kill believers can give you? Seven days, Reverend Doctor died. He's been buried. A lecture in one Bible school. Life is not about title, it's about power. We're in one of our crossover nights in Umwa. Every, every last day of the month, we do a crossover. We come from everywhere. Why we're in that crossover? We're just worshiping. I didn't know there's one of the special assistants to our immediate past, our immediate our past governor that was in the staff. We have, we had a, we had a problem. What was the problem? A student from Nigeria wrote exam in Switzerland. The whole world came for that exam. He took first. The day they were to honor him in Abuja, President Buhari was in, in London and the vice president was to receive him. They call him Honorable Reader. That morning, he woke up. He couldn't stand. What is it that is holding you on your bed on the day of your coronation? When he stood, he had come here. He couldn't bend again. That's how they were waiting for him in Abuja. He was dying in his teeth. Now watch this. <laughs> so he was in, he had gone to FM soon. Why? Orthopedic doctor subjected him to mature. They scanned him and they said to him, This thing is bad. You have to go to India for surgery. So they reached out to India, sent all the details. India told him 70 slash 30. I asked, what was that? They said 70% after the surgery, he will come back on a wheelchair, 70%. 30% he may walk. So the chances of him being crippled is 
more. And then they are charged him 14 million. 14 million that one statement with power can end. Look at you. You are standing before pharmacy everywhere. Every day is pharmacy. Every week is pharmacy. Every day. Even when you appear in a pharmacy, they now know your drugs. So is it your drugs? Are you a Christian or a medicine person? You take drugs in the morning, you take it in the afternoon, you take it in the night. Take, just like that. Ha! Huh. They don't pursue rats in a house that is burning with fire. You know why I'm speaking like this? I want you to be angry. Because sometimes you need to be angry to reposition yourself. When you are too comfortable in a situation, you don't change that situation. They charge them 14 million. The person arranging to pay the money, the committee, the people arranging to pay the money, one of them is a known man in my state called Professor Mba Agumpa. He was the former VC of Absu, Abda State University and was, was former SSG of the state. So he was standing in for the government. They were to pay 14 million. And he entered the service. In the service before we came, we were on tongues for 12 hours. When it was night, we appeared. Then, as we were worshipping, a woman in the crowd shouted, I can see. The woman was blind. The brother rushed him as they were celebrating. Special assistance now to the woman who looked at him. And if a blind woman can see, why would they tell me not to bend? So he bent and came up, no pain. He was bending freely. Spinal cord problem, 14 million naira settled without any declaration, just in the atmosphere of power. Everything had been settled. Then the guy started shouting, his on video. He started streaming everywhere. The following crossover night, we saw government officials inside the crossover with their entourage. They said, where is it that they can correct spinal cord problem without a touch? May I declare to somebody, you will not pass through this world like a vapor. You will be like the handkerchief of the Lord to wipe away tears of so many. By power, by power, those who are crying, those who are mourning, when you appear, their celebration will start. And I declare to somebody in this building, your celebration by power starts now. Jordan, sir. At River Jordan, 
freely, no price. As he was baptized, heaven opened. The Holy Ghost descended on him like a dove. He came out of River Jordan with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes on a man, the thing that the Holy Ghost does is to start leading you into the world of power. But unfortunately, many resist him there. That's why the Bible says, quench not the Holy Ghost. Resist him not. Because he can tell you what to do, you won't do it. So when he's leading you, you are not, he wakes you up in the night, you can't wake up. He tells you to study, you can't study. He tells you to fast, you are eating. So you, you, you cut short the, the, the flow of power that he was taking you into. Sir, the Holy Ghost is permanent. It's forever. No matter what you do, the Holy Ghost is there with you. Jesus said, he shall be with you till the end of the age. No matter where you go to, the Holy Ghost is there. He can't leave you because of your behavior. Because he has been mandated to be there. That is what redemption brought. But power leaks. Power goes out. How do I know? Jesus, when touched by a woman, said, power has gone out of me. Power has gone. So power can move. The Holy Spirit is constantly constant with you. But power evaporates. Power leaks. That is why we have many S anointed. Oh, okay, S powerful. He used to be in power. All his testimony is 1992, 1996, 1960. What of 2019? The last time I checked the scripture, he said, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. Why is your own not steady? Because there's a price to it. Anybody who tells you the power of God you're praying to live without prices, you see, you need, you need to convince me from Bible. I river Jordan, he received Holy Ghost. But when the Holy Ghost came, guess what? The Bible says, straight away. I told you the Spirit introduced you to the word of power. Because you receive power after he comes. Because his assignment first is to move you into power. He doesn't want you to be an ordinary person. You grow in it. The, the Holy Spirit does not increase in your life. But power increases. So, so, so he moved him to the wilderness, to the mountain. Where he had to pay the price. There, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. A price. It's a price. Look at your neighbor. Say there's a price. If you can't pay it, forget power. It's for everybody, but if you can't pay it, forget it. In a great man's house, there are many vessels. Some for honor, some for dishonor. Now, Bible talk about this. He said, in that great man's house, all of them are inside the house. But some inside the house, they talk, and heaven is heaven is responding. There are some when they talk, it's as if they have been a group. Said they are not the same level. Vessel of gold, vessel of wood, vessel of silver. Now guess what? It's not God that determines that one. It's you. Because he put the price on him. He said, if a man purges himself, that's price. He shall become a vessel unto God. Why should you be purging yourself inside the house already? No, it's not talking about you cleaning yourself. It's talking about the price. That's why Paul said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. So it's not about money. It's about what you put in. I saw one of my topic as the, as, as a, I think about the power of sacrifice or something. I'll expand on it. It's garbage in, garbage out. I can't be praying for hours a day and you are praying 30 minutes in one week and you expect us to be at the same level. Jesus himself, the Holy Ghost led him to mount him as he stood there. Hi -ya 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 -ya. He stayed there for 40 days and 40 nights. Guess what? At River Jordan, the Bible says he returned with the Holy Ghost. But from the mountain, guess what the Bible says? He returned with the power of the Spirit because the price was paid. River Jordan, he returned with Holy Ghost. 
and on the mountain he returned with the power of the spirit somebody said power powers of old powers of old the price is where men are separated from boys the price is where great men come out of lesser men the price is where non-entities become some entities. The price is where zeros rise from heroes. The price is where you look at a man, he looks offensive. It doesn't look like he's called by God. But all of a sudden, there's a shift because he has gone to pay the price. The price! The price! There's price of power. Paul said to Timothy, when we laid hands on you, something entered freely by our laying of hands. For Timothy, now pay the price. Tear it up. For you, for it, for you to be steered, you will pay the price. Timothy, steer this thing. So before something entered us, nineteen eighty something, but you have refused to steer it. There was a time you were walking on the road. The Holy Ghost was speaking to you. Even songs were being sung in your heart without you knowing. You didn't contribute anything to it, but you couldn't steer it. You, there was a time if somebody's knocking on your door, somebody just a name just flashed in your heart, and suddenly the person starts knocking on your door. The Holy Ghost was witnessing, brother, so, 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 and so is looking for you because you have started working with him in a different level. So he needs to tell you what is happening with your environment. But suddenly you quenched it because of weakness. This is where men are separated from you. This is where soldiers of the cross are separated from weaklings in church. You will see the result. Makuka Bahadusha, Ida Bakuri Gadaga, Metu Kaparushaga, Ikanu Zikara Baroshaka. It is the price that makes the difference. I can't forget 2012 when I was preaching for. Father, the bishop. In one night, we had how many deaf ears open? A woman that Amrabas came to his house, came to her house, butchered her. She had too many things blocked in her body. She started walking on her own that night. I can't forget it. I still have the video. This is the difference. Price. Price. substance you can pick from their message. Not. I was telling somebody, how can you take a microphone and say, yeah, they to to a na bali. Give it, they make it that. <laughs> say, yeah, yeah. Say, ha, 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 ha. From the beginning to the end, nothing. Nobody can associate anything from what you are saying. You know why? Because you can fake everything, but you can't fake the world. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal mystery. No devil, devil quotes Bible out of context. 
He looked at Jesus and said, It is written, come down from the mount. And just are there. He quoted it out of context. He doesn't know the preachers. He doesn't know the posters. He doesn't know the context. So, what can he do? You can't fake Bible. Let me tell you something. This Bible you carry does not have power as you are carrying it in there. But when it moves from this written word into your spirit, it becomes power. And the Holy Ghost walking with them, confirming their words with signs. Anywhere there is word, there will be power. He sent his word. His word, which is power agent. He led them. His word delivered them from their destruction. Where you lack word, you lack power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Ezekiel said, and he told me to stand and I couldn't stand. Then he spoke his word into me. He said, the spirit of the word entered me. He said, the spirit of that word raised me and stood me on my feet. He said, and I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, there was a noise. You can't speak the word in without power. Anywhere the word goes, power goes. I was, I was, uh, you need to know how I study. When you ask my people, they will tell you. I take, sometimes I go, I separate myself in a camp. No prayer, just study. Just read it. One day, sometimes in my house, when I read and catch a rhema, I carry the Bible on my head. I'm shouting, hey! I've got four kids. Three girls and one boy. I'm shouting like a madman with my knicker and, and my top. Hey! Hey! My wife will say, hey, he has started. Oh, they They don't start. Then all my children start following. They'll go and look for any book they can and put on their head. The man will be shouting, hey! People will be shouting, hey! Angel will be shouting, hey! And the little one there, that is one year plus, hey! Hey! Himself can see anything. Even, even Rapai can put on top of her head. Because they, they are used to it. Sometimes when I'm reading, they come to me and say, Dad, is it not yet time for us to shout? I say, there's something I'm looking for. When I find it, we shout. And the moment I find it, as I shout, they will say, Daddy, it's like you have found it. I say, yeah! You can't catch Rema and be normal. It intoxicates me. It makes you wise. You look at Satan and say, where comes thou? You want to defy him? Kapu shattered that day. You can be wanted and be, and be a failure. I read my Bible one day from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. As I was reading, no prayer. 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. The rhema was heavy. It was like something sat on me. My bones was on fire. Hey, there's a level word becomes fire. Jeremiah said, as I try to shut my mouth, it becomes fire in my bone. He said, your word is like a hammer. Your word is like a, it's like a fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is where the Bible said that the word is speak to us, their spirit and life. As I was reading in that time, at 5 a.m., I heard the voice of my father. He called my name three times. Uche, 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 do you know what you're doing? Because I was just speaking in as I was opening different translations, then he said, Uche, do you know what you're doing? I said, yes, sir. I'm studying the word. I'm doing the word. He said to me, you are not just studying the word. You are mingling with spirits. I said, I don't understand. He now brought that scripture to lie to me. He said, the word I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. When you stay in the word, you are fellowshipping with spirits. Our fellowship is with the Father by the spirits. He spoke in Jerusalem. He came to pass in Campanion. Do you know occultic men do what they call astral travel? They project themselves out of the body. Go and ask them how they do it. They use some books, like seven books of Moses, as they are reading. When they are in deep meditation, they come out of their body and travel. The same way we do travel, because they copy from us. There's a way you take scripture. If you are struggling financially, you 
take scripture on finances. As you begin to meditate on it, I wish above. So among all my wishes, this one is above. That thou mayest prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospereth. For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. That he may establish the covenant he had with your fathers. As you are meditating on these things, for my God shall supply all your needs. Not according to the economy of the nation, but according to his riches in glory. So if the country is going through recession, it does not concern me. Because I operate in a higher level. So as you are meditating on it, you can project yourself out of poverty to prosperity. You can project your business. You can. You are sick. Take scriptures on sickness. You see this is my voice because I shout every day. I preach almost every day. See the way my voice is. There was a day. There was a time before I come. They will tell them, get hot water, get alligator pepper, uh, get uh, bitter cola. Because I was always having so truth. It continued. One that was listening to a word of God from the mouth of a man of God. As the word was heavy. It pointed towards me. I said, you are the one that allowed that situation to remain like that. I went wide with that word. As I meditated that word all through the night. In the midnight, I stood up. And I slid hands on my neck. And I quoted, by his stripes, I am healed 53 times. By the time I quoted, I said, hey, you so truth. I have tolerated you enough. Enough is enough. Get out! I went back to sleep. I woke up, I forgot it. It was after some three days that I remember it was no more there. Since that year till now, I preach every day. You see, when I'm talking to you, you may not hear me well. You may not hear me well when I'm talking. But the moment I carry my microphone, you hear me. I sing. Oh, when I have an album that sold nationwide, oh, sold international, with this voice, oh, with this cracked voice. My dear, there's, there's a grace that comes when I take the microphone. Since that time, no, no more so truth. Because the word entered there and got its feast. You can't know Bible and know no power. I told people, anywhere you see manifestation without, without word, suspect occultism. And anywhere you see word without power, suspect carnality. They are not separated, they are interwoven. You can't know it and it will work. A preacher came to preach for me many years back. As he was preaching, and everybody was rushing to give offering. One of my one of our members in our ministry that they, they brought his uncle. The uncle had accident and was creepy. He had two clutches. What? No prayer. The preacher is not even into healing or whatever. As he was preaching, as people were going to drop offering, the man came out from his seat and dropped offering. It was when he finished dropping that he looked. And saw that he had left his crutches. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, more word, more power. Number two, price for power, prayer, sir. If you can't pray, forget it. All your acrobatics, <laughs> when you finish, you will come down. You will shut that thing when you meet a deaf person. You will know. You will know the difference between exercise and power. If you can't pray, <laughs> King, the book of Kings said Elijah locked heaven. Even some preachers said locked heaven, put the key in his pocket and cried. James said, Before you run that level and it was broken. Let me explain what happened. Elijah was a man of like passion. But he prayed earnestly. So why he declared it happened was because he prayed earnestly. So don't just go and be declaring. Also pray earnestly. So it is prayer that makes what is declared have power. And James said the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man. He said, I like the translation that said, make a tremendous power available. He says it's dynamics in its working. Ephesians said, pray, message translation said, I think Ephesians chapter 6 said, pray hard and pray long. Jesus will always go around free and pray all through till the day break. And you said you won't pray. The word is praying. You said you won't pray. And you just be quoting. No problem. You will, you will, you will, you will hear a one day. One preacher went to Bini to preach. Oh, that's not his fault. That's not your fault. I just gotta come and help you. As he was just talking, he finished it. He slept in his hotel that night. In the morning, he woke up in the market. It was early morning sun that woke him up.
just shine on his face. He woke up. He called his host. He said, I don't think I'm called to be here. The host said, Are you true? You are not called to be here? Yeah, we don't tell stories around it. Yeah, which is a wizard of great his cake and blanche. Well, ask Bishop Benson in the house of blessed memory how he conquered the environment. He wasn't talking. Something good. Look at Elijah. He said, Ahab, the rain is about to fall. Eat and drink. For himself, he was not eating. He put his head in between his knees. What was he looking for in prayer? There is a hand that can bring water. When he rests on water, I know rain won't go. As he was praying, he called his servant and said, Go check for me if that hand had appeared. The servant went and said, Nothing. He said, What do you mean, nothing? Go and check again. He checked. He said, Nothing. He said, What do you mean? I call it pray until something happened. Shakuta, Elatobo, Isakata, Ekato, Ekada. Check until the seventh time. The voice said, The hand I saw appeared on the water. It's like cloud and the hand of a man. Elijah said, That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I've been praying for. Ah, before I told you to eat and drink, right now, saddle your horses and run because the rain is here. Prayer makes your prophecy a reality. It is written. Prayer makes it a reality. How do I mean? Apostle Paul of grace said, spirit of boldness he had in pastors. Then in another scripture, he they gave them a prayer for us. He said, pray for us that we will have boldness. He said, when you pray, you receive. Not that I give. I have given. But it is your prayer that makes you receive. You're in prayer, you receive what is provided. He said, when you pray, pray in this manner. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. My dear, the world is forever settled in heaven, but you need prayer to make it settled in your family. It's settled forever in heaven. You need prayer to make it settled. That's why people are living opposite of what is written, and it's not bothering them. And they are believing that something must change one day. Who told you? Nothing changed until something moves it to change. The preacher said, if there is a man to pray, there is a call to answer. I have told them in my radio program on that, I said the, the, the life is a journey. Fools depend on their legs. Wise depend on their knees. To kneel is to win. If you can kneel before God, you can stand before any man. The next thing is fasting. Come the old fashioned. I refuse to agree that a child of God should do fast again. Because Jesus told them, he said, there's a time the bridegroom will be taken from them, they will fast. He said, why they were ministering to the Lord, with, with, to the Holy Ghost, with fasting and prayer. So, they use it to minister, and the Lord said, in the midst of the fasting, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. Who told you there's no more fasting? Jesus said, this kind goeth not, except by praying and fasting. There are realms you can't stop it into, until you separate yourself. But fasting is not for competition, it's for focus. For you to focus well. When you have too many distractions, you have to focus. Look at me carefully. I've mentioned three things. I can't continue. I don't know how many minutes I still have. I can't continue. Let me, let me learn. These three, you can't do them until one. There's, there's one force that controls three of them. Because if narcotic men fast, I'm from Unhafia in Abia State. Inside that Unhafia, there's a village called Okon. When the native doctors there in those days want to go on a serious journey, they don't eat, they don't sleep with them. The Lumba Lumba people, they fast. So fasting can even open you up to demons. That's why I talked about the world. I tried to balance it. Now, but watch this. There's something that controls. All these unnecessary fast people do. They, 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 I, I just finished 30 days. In my chamber, I can't hear. Sure. Sure. Then they 
there's a force that controls these things. You can do these things and not have power. But if you have this one, you must have power because it will lead you to three things. What is it? It is called undying hunger for God. I'm closing now with this. That was why Paul stayed years in the desert of Arabia. And people came to hear more from him. The first word that came out of his mouth. That I may know him. A man you have spent three years and was it not you Paul that said I know a man whether in the flesh or in the spirit I don't know who was caught up to be with him in the third heavens and heard and saw some things to utter and some not to utter. Yet you are still shouting that I may know him. Because the more you know him, the more you know you don't know him. He is the immortality that dwelleth in an unapproachable light. He is a mystery that revealed himself and still remained a mystery. No man can say he has known everything about God. Can't know everything about God. Watch this. It's called undying hunger. If you miss it and you run with fasting, you will go tired. If you miss it and you say, I must pray five hours. After a while, you are tired. You will be checking your watch in good days. You will be like children that their mother gave fasting. They now want the time to go. They went and adjusted the clock and said, Mommy, it's time to eat. You gave yourself fasting. You are checking clock. What is happening? Sir, listen. Undying hunger. Sometimes you want to fast six to six. You end up the following day. Because by six o'clock, something is still boiling in your heart. Then I may know him. Then I may know him. Then I may know him. He can talk or talk. Before you know it, the day break. Before you know it, the third day. It's called hunger. That is why God didn't say, I will feed you when you pray. I will feed you when you fast. He said, I will pour water on a testy ground. I will pour flood on a dry ground. When Elisha has them to pour oil when there is no more vessel. When all the vessel was filled, we are all filled. The oil is stayed. The flow of power stops where your hunger stops. When you think you are full, the flow stops. You start dropping. Ladies and gentlemen, I call it undying hunger. It doesn't die. Jesus, on the last day of the feast, when men were going to the temple of buffet, they were going to take their buffet. Jesus stood on a particular corner as every crowd all the crowd they were moving towards that direction Jesus was shouting let him that is thirsty come and drink the invitation is not for prayer warriors the invitation is not for one night the invitation is not for fasting person the invitation is for those who are hungry those who say Lord it is more of you those who say Lord I am tired of where I am I want to move to the next level those who said a man said Lord it's either you come and touch me or I will, I will die and come to touch you a friend of mine in Umwaya called Pastor Jerry the wife was fasting on the 40 days he had gone to understudy my, uh, my, uh, my tomorrow on how to do fast and I tried to stop her, me and her husband the woman refused to be stopped she grew lean but she was seeking God a woman 40 days and 40 nights only on liquid I asked her and now what are you doing with it? You are not a senior pastor. We use it to joke. I say it's like you want to take over this church from your from your from your husband. The woman is hungry. You see her fall on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in Ghana to preach. A friend of mine came to see me in the hotel. While we're talking, he was doing like this, doing like this. Suddenly he moved and knelt beside my bed. He it was like that for four hours. So I said, Was there any problem? He said, No. There's no problem, he said. I remember the number of hours I used to spend in his presence. I've not been able to complete it today. So while we're talking, the unction was heavy. So I had to go and download it a little. So there are people, even their hunger is attracting more power. When they are talking with you, something is hitting them. It's like a wave of unction. Don't tell me you'll be at the same level with them. you seen a deer pan for water before? Oh, go and google it. Take the video. How a deer pan for water? Water is, is good and tasty when you, are, when you are dry. When you drink enough, you take it for granted. One day in Umwaya, I spent one month without even knowing few times I go out. I wasn't fasting. I was just hungry. I was just hungry. And in the midst of my hunger, the, the last day of that one month, it was on a Sunday. I was invited to preach in Assemblies of God to 5 to 7 a.m. Reverend Henry Emelike is the, was the pastor. He is a Reverend Emelike PhD. You can ask him. He is the 
stupid decision came that never he was a pastor that invited me. So I came and as I was preaching, the glory was heavy. And I had an encounter with God. He just turned, turned something for my wife. So the Lord said to me, anywhere you share that testimony, I will do unusual things. So I said to him, this glory I'm feeling, what is it for? The Lord said, anything you like, use it for. So I said to I said to Reverend Henry Melika, you could have a church for deaf and dumb people. These are not people they don't know. These are no visitors. I said, I have a church for deaf and dumb people. He says, I said, send people to close that church and bring them. Now the Lord said, anything I want, I should release this power. So they went and brought them. They are 23. They have a pastor that went to Bible school called Reverend Ogabe. He will use sign language in those days to pastor them. So they came, 23 of them. And I said, Father, I release your power in this deaf year and deaf mouth. Sir, ha, Reverend Abraham, in what Sunday service? Nine out of 23. Started hearing and talking. A man was asking, is this real? I said, no, be your member. It, make, it makes you a wonder. Don't, don't tell him how to manifest himself. He knows how to manifest. Carry the thing first. When you carry it, then we know. Those that despise you, I said, they go, no. Those be hungry, rise to your feet. It's time to pray. My time is hope. Don't rise like a normal human being. At this level, throw the notes one corner. When you go, buy the message and read the notes more. Ja, 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 ja. Ela tuka ta ta ta. Isu, su, su. Isa, za, za. Ela to, 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 to. Uparada, higarada, higarada, higarada. I want you to cry out to him. Baptize me afresh with hunger. I need your power as of old. This is what our fathers of Assemblies of God Church. This was what they used to open churches and Bible school in an evil forest. That's how they put altar in a shrine and clear the gods. They clear the gods of the shrine. The gods of the shrine saw them and fled. This is where Papa Yaklemi, Papa Yaklemi of blessed memory, demonstrated the power. Many of our Bible schools, they are in an evil forest. In Odomaya, in the Bible school is an evil forest. Yet, there's no sign of any deity. Men drop deities away. They became the oracles of their time. You can be a wonder for your family. Businessman, you need power. Students, you need power. You need power. Oh, Bashata. Oh, Bashata. Let him that is thirsty. Let him that is thirsty. Come and drink. The Lord is here for hungry souls. As I came to my own, they rejected me. But to them that receive me, let him that is thirsty drink. It's an open invitation. Lift your two hands to heaven. Lift your two hands. Just watch the crowd. <laughs> The Lord said to me, there are 17 persons. He said, he's going to steer something inside of you now. He said, he put inside of you what will manifest you to your generation. But it's lying dormant. But he said, he's going to steer it now. There's a power that will come on you. It's for steering. 